Why is this plant known as the vine that ate the South? If you've ever driven through any highway in the American South, you've probably seen endless miles of this vine covering buildings, walls, and even whole forests as far as the eye can see. This invasive vine known as kudzu has become a notorious villain in the Southern United States, smothering trees, devouring landscapes, and swallowing highways. But here's the twist. Kudzu is actually native to Japan, a staggering 7,000 miles away from the states it blankets. So how did this foreign invader end up conquering the South? And who on earth thought it was a good idea to import it from the other side of the world? Well, if you guessed the federal government, you'd be correct. The story of Kudzu's invasion of the American South begins during the Great Depression and Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal. In the 1930s, the South was grappling with a severe agricultural crisis as a result of decades of poor land management practices. Believing kudzu to be a miracle plant that could stop soil erosion, FDR initiated a plan to distribute kudzu to farmers through the newly established Soil Conservation Service. This New Deal program grew a staggering 70 million kudzu seedlings and offered financial subsidies paying $8 an acre, the equivalent of nearly 200 today, to anyone who would plant the vine. You see, once the government payments ended, many farmers turned to much more profitable uses of their land, neglecting the kudzu that had once been promoted as an agricultural savior. By the time the government had stopped promoting kudzu in the 1950s, the damage was already done. With its remarkable growth rate of up to one foot per day, kudzu had become an uncontrollable force. It thrived in warm and humid climates of states like Georgia and Alabama, spreading rapidly and smothering everything in its path. By the time the government reclassified it as a weed in 1970, the vine had already established a stranglehold on the American South. Now covering around 8 million acres, it is no longer saving soil, but instead causing hundreds of millions in damage each year. It's hard to maintain. Spreading across the U.S. at a rate of 150,000 acres each year. The irony is pretty striking. Yet again, we have a well-intentioned government initiative to combat soil erosion, inadvertently leading to one of the greatest environmental disasters in the South's history. And yet, this isn't the first time this has happened, nor will it probably be the last. It may never go away. Control may be the best hope. But why does it keep happening? Well, maybe it has something to do with the damage of such policies only being realized after the politicians who implemented them are out of office or even dead which is probably why we should be a little bit more skeptical of them and remember the old Thomas Sowell quote, that it is hard to imagine a more stupid or more dangerous way of making decisions than by putting those decisions in the hands of people who pay no price for being wrong.